Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ken Busby, your cultural czar, member of the board of the Tulsa Symphony, and we're here today with our musician moment and Rob Katz, uh, one of our fantastic bass players. Rob, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks, Ken. How are you doing? Good, I'm well, thank you. And thanks for taking time to, to share with us today a little bit and, and some time to uh, let people learn about, about you and your background. Uh, these musician moments have been really popular and, and our audiences are really enjoying just getting to know the people they see on stage. There's some interesting people. <laughs> there are, and you're one of them. So, <laughs> so, so let's, uh, you know, you and I've gotten to work together on, on, on several committees and, and projects of, of the board and so forth over the years and known each other in a variety of capacities, but let's talk about how long you've been with the Tulsa Symphony. Well, I've been with the Tulsa Symphony since it's, beginning so right. i'm a you're I'm a lifer a carryover. you're I'm a lifer a carryover from the tulsa philharmonic <laughs> right and then you know as part of the new orchestra i was one of the original musicians to be a part of the organization when it first started so uh yeah so i've been there for as long as it's been there that's awesome i was going to use a very bad pun and say you've been instrumental in its success Yuck, yuck, yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but it's really true. I mean, you have been there to help us craft bylaws and policies and, and all of it. And you've just been such a tremendous uh, asset to the organization. And then you're this tremendous bass player, too. So um, how, how did you come to the bass? I knew you were going to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's interesting. It's a very large instrument. It is a large instrument. I actually came to the bass fairly late in mm. my sort of musical training mm -hmm. uh i started playing bass at the end of my senior year in high school okay <clears throat> and uh i i had played electric bass but mm -hmm. i never studied formally mm -hmm. and i was i actually started playing music in school i grew up in new york city right and uh but we didn't have orchestra we had band uh not marching band but concert band okay uh and when in, uh, i was in high school i was playing tuba for uh, probably my junior and senior years. And uh, so I was playing electric bass, I was playing tuba, mm -hmm. so I was sort of a low register guy. Mm -hmm. uh, and But I was really interested in music and I had studied music theory some in high school and had a, a mentor kind of teacher in high mm -hmm. school who mm -hmm. sort of, you know, was very instrumental, as you say, right. uh, in, you know, sort of, guiding my own interests and uh, so I decided I wanted to be a music major but that was kind of a challenge for someone who didn't have an instrument that he really played because I didn't study privately on tuba or any okay. other instrument so huh. you know we basically played on innate ability and whatever they taught us in <laughs> class and sure uh, you know if you're going to be a music major you have to study pretty seriously so that was a kind of an interesting proposition considering the fact that there are no musicians in my family, so it's not like wow. you know somebody was at home saying, "Yeah, this is how you practice, and this is what you need to do." And sure, they were supportive, but they didn't know much about it. Right, right. So, why do you think you gravitated toward it? Toward the bass or music? Toward in music in general. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh well, music is uh, music is a, an art form that for me transcends uh, the mundane kind of existence of being a human being. It allows us access to emotion and feeling and spirit that, uh, you know, is almost kind of a mystical experience. I shouldn't even oh. say almost, it is. It just is, yeah. And so, you know, it's like once you get sort of drawn into that kind of experience, it's like you can't get enough of it mm -hmm. <laughs> right mm -hmm. and so you need to be a part of it to the greatest extent possible and so playing music and studying music and listening to music was uh, a form of kind of devotion right okay yeah uh, a way of a, a way of communing with my sense of who i am and a sense of something greater than myself uh, so you right. know i've been very fortunate that i've gotten to do this as something for my entire adult life absolutely uh, that is so meaningful absolutely uh, well you're also an academician 
uh, and we can talk a little bit about about that role of, of your world. But uh, since this is such a passion for you and a calling and a devotion, can you see yourself doing anything else? Um, can I see? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't actually think I have enough time in my life to pursue <laughs> <laughs> yet another career. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Just any of us. But, you know, okay. But, you know, I've always been interested in, like, uh, cosmology, sciences, that, you know, mm-hmm. it's another form of being able to sort of pierce that veil of what's beyond, you know? Exactly. And so, uh, you know, those are, that's a, that's a really kind of deep interest for me that I really like the, how neat. Know, knowing that how the universe is structured and what's going on out there and what, what is all this? What's going on? What's uh-huh. really going on? What's really going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you and Carl Sagan. Yes, exactly. Because I, I, I always marveled at that man. I just appreciated everything that I ever saw him do and things that I've read, that his books and so forth. Uh, that that framework and that, that, as you say, that peering into. Yeah. And having such a great ability to articulate those thoughts that everyone can understand. Right? Exactly, exactly. So is that... Is that is that also something of an of an avocation for you? I mean, so when you're not when you're not teaching, when you're not uh, being a, being a musician, um, for your downtime. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, you know, I read about it. Uh, I had it broke, but I had a really nice telescope for a while that oh, cool. I was able to use and uh, see even in my own backyard. Just gaze up at the planets and things and mm-hmm. uh, inter, you know, galactic bodies out there that you, know, you could see and wonder about and, you know when you start thinking about those kinds of things and this is kind of an interesting direction for this conversation by the way <laughs> okay uh, you know you start thinking about wow the first people who saw these things and they lived oh. a certain time yes you know, 500 years ago and what an amazing experience it was for someone like Galileo to sort of peer up at Saturn mm-hmm. and see those moons and uh, you know start to have different answers to questions about the way people thought about how the world actually works you know so um, yeah I mean I read a lot of different things mm-hmm. and I have lots of different interests uh, beyond just music but I think they are all related in kind of interesting ways, you know, interest, as a as a humanities professor, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, I find pretty much everything co- kind of relates to <laughs> sure. uh, how we as human beings attempt to understand what our lives are all about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you think about it, pretty much everything that goes on contributes to some dimension of understanding what that is, right? Good point. Um, and the arts for me, are particularly, you know, powerful in terms of my relating to them Mm -hmm. and how to communicate that experience. So, um, so yeah, I find lots of things interesting, but, you know, the arts in particular are, are important. Absolutely. And, and like you were saying, I always think about arts and, and, and music within the arts and so forth, uh, as transcending language and all the barriers uh, and, and all the, all the things that we think about, whether you speak the language or understand whatever that it, it will still speak to you and it'll give you music will do that. Art will do that. And what better thing to, to, uh, bridge gaps and so forth than that. Right. Yeah. You know, art has a really interesting and very powerful way of, of communicating I often tell my students that uh, language is one of the greatest obstacles to communication. <laughs> <laughs> it's really true. You're being funny, but it's true. Yeah. yeah. I'm being funny and serious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. It's a, <laughs> it's those dual personalities of yours. Yeah. Well, it's just a paradox though. You know? it it's is. like, this is how we communicate, but it's like, do you understand what I mean when I say this or that? Mm-hmm. Well, and even even like these video chats are so different from doing uh, an, uh, an interview or conversation in person. Even though I, we see each other, still it's the nuances that we may not be able to pick up on as well. And, and if, if we're trying to communicate, it may not be as clear and misunderstandings happen. And yeah, all of that. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Well, listen, uh, you're going to actually uh, perform for us today. So what are we what are we going to get to hear from you? So uh, I'm going to play the first movement of, uh, it's actually a cello sonata. It's a transcription for double bass, and 
the, the first movement is a prelude by Arcangelo Corelli. Oh, nice. Uh, so Corelli, one of the great Baroque masters, yeah. a great string player and string writer. And uh, I really like this movement because to me it's, uh, it's a slow movement and uh, it has a very strong kind of uh, expressive quality to it. Mm -hmm. it. It's kind of somber. The, the bass version is in uh, C minor, the cello version is in D minor. Um, and to me, it kind of uh, it has this almost cantorial quality, you know, mm -hmm. like a cantor in a synagogue. Sure. And sure. Kind of this, this ponderous and you know, thoughtful kind of question with this very melancholy quality. So uh, that's the piece that I chose. That's awesome. And and listening to you describe it, uh, I should have reminded everyone that you also write our wonderful program notes for the Tulsa Symphony when we're, when we're performing in the Intermission Magazine. I do. And yep. you do such a great job with those. I mean, I really feel like I, I have a much better appreciation of what I'm hearing after I read those. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. It's uh, it's. It's a meaningful thing for me to write the program notes because I know there are people who read them. I know mm -hmm. some people, you know, they just get the intermission and kind of right. It. It's very gratifying, mm -hmm. uh, and I also like, you know, to communicate with people about music, right? And Absolutely. Have these works. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And, and uh, so finding ways to say things that will communicate to someone mm -hmm. what is going on both historically as well as artistically and expressively is it's an interesting intellectual challenge for me but it's also kind of a fun way to reach out to the audience and uh, you know i kind of cherish that absolutely no that's that's wonderful and as you say and connect on yet another level the music and the exactly. words and everything so well rob katz it's been a real delight visiting with you today thanks for your time thanks ken i appreciate it absolutely you take care and i will look forward to seeing you in person very soon Thank you. Be well. Uh, Take care. You too now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.